Let's now check our, our situation with regards to COVID-19. We have new cases now standing at 509, active cases now at 2,428, confirmed cases now at 133,555, and recoveries now standing at 129,862. Deaths have certainly passed the 1,000 mark. We are 1,000 and uh, 266. We can all speak with our correspondents across the country and see how people are protecting themselves. Let's start with the northern region, Tamale, and speak with Martina Buguri. Martina, uh, what can you report from Tamale? I've uh, had a breakdown of power in the region is doing in terms of vaccination and then we come to what people are doing ahead of the Christmas. The region has done just around 4.9% of those who have been fully vaccinated. Out of the 1.2 million people they are targeted, and just 17.6 people have uh, received at least one uh, dose of the vaccine. It means that the region has to do more than 80% to be able to get the 1.2 million people are vaccinated. Um, 256,454 doses of AstraZeneca have been administered, 10,000 Moderna, and 16,872 Pfizer uh, doses have been uh, administered. We are told that most people are waiting for the Johnson and & Johnson, and the region has just received a large uh, dose of this, and they are expected to administer uh, this December. We are told that about third of the doses that have been uh, administered were done just this December. And so the Ghana Health Service is hoping that at least um, by the end of the year going into the new year, say the festive season, they would have done about 10,000 uh, doses of uh, Johnson & Johnson. Um, the Ghana Health Service Deputy Public Health Director, Dr. Bruce, addressed the media this uh, morning, and he says that a total of 284,377 doses of vaccinations have been administered in the region. Now, the region currently um, has no active case. We have a uh, 17 deaths, and then we have 1,237 um, total case counts for each year. Um, what people are doing now, fortunately, the hammer time is here, and so normally during the hammer time, you have people wearing the mask to prevent themselves from dust entering them. And so it's an opportunity. So we have seen an increase of people using the face mask. But when it comes to the protocol of washing hands, using the sanitizer, that is lost, especially um, institutions and then um, gatherings. So you go to most gatherings, you don't have uh, uh, sanitary conditions that you need to adhere to the protocol. So basically, yes, um, people are beginning to wear the nose mask not because of COVID-19, but because the weather is getting bad, it's getting dusty, and people need to uh, have better air to be, so they are wearing their nose masks. And are there uh, large events expected this Christmas in the region that you know of? And it started already. Um, we have had um, two big concerts at the Tamale Sports Stadium. On Sunday, we had a, a big show at a one of the sports in the uh, region, and they are expected to have more contests and big events at sports in the region. And so we are expected to see more gatherings as the festive season picks up. Mm. Martina Bogri there from Tamale. So at this large event, do you see people actually wearing their nose mask and keeping the physical distances? That is not observed at all. And that is why the Ghana Health Service is calling on the people in the region that they believe that their festive seasons are fertile grounds for the virus to spread very fast. And so they are expecting um, residents to at 
least adhere to the washing of hands and then the social distancing. If the wearing of the mask is a difficulty, but they are hoping that people will just adhere to um, the protocols and strictly do it. Bugri is uh, from Tamale and she's been telling us more on what people are doing to protect themselves. Uh, let's get to the Bono East region. Anna Sabit uh, joins us via Zoom. Anna Sabit, what can you report from your region? Hello, Anas. Aisha. Yes, Anas, go ahead. Yes, um... The situation here in the Bono East region, um, you know, cumulatively, the region has recorded a total of 2,561 uh, cases and um, uh, 64 deaths. Okay. Uh, out of this number of people who have died, 50 of them lost their lives this year. So um, a lot of uh, the people who have lost their lives through COVID-19 happened in the year 2021. Uh, with a case fatality of 2.5, uh, a figure regional health authorities are saying is way higher than the national uh, average. Uh, we have currently six active cases in the region as of Monday, it was three, and uh, today we have six. Four of them are mild cases, and two of them are, you know, severe cases, according to the uh, health directorate. Now, um, in terms of uh, the vaccine, uh, vaccinations, we have um, over 30 percent of the targeted population in the region uh, receiving their jobs. Uh, we know uh, three municipalities, the Chiman, Kintampo, and Kranza, have recorded more than 70 percent of the cumulative cases recorded in the region. And um, so um, health authorities are quite concerned about uh, how the, uh, these three municipalities or these three areas are contributing to the figures. Uh, vaccine hesitancy is not so much an issue in these three areas because of the figures they've contributed. Uh, but the issue has to do with the rural areas where uh, health authorities say more education needs to be uh, conducted or done in the far east, through east, through west areas, in order to have more such uh, people also uh, accepting the uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccine. So, uh, in a nutshell, this is the situation here in the Bruno East region. Uh, how are the people themselves um, comporting themselves or uh, taking care of themselves as far as uh, preventing spread is concerned? Yes, Asha, um, currently you could see there is an uh, uh, increase in the number of people using the face masks. Uh, you go to the streets, so you see a lot of people with their mask on. Uh, maybe the weather could be a factor because there's uh, so much dust in the uh, weather <laughs> lately. And uh, as a result, you see a lot of people, especially those riding, almost all of them being in masks. And then uh, also, when you walk through uh, the market areas, you see a lot of people masking up. But uh, apart from the nose masks, hand washing, hardly do you even see um, hand washing uh, bowls or uh, Veronica Bacchus uh, as we used to see them earlier. And uh, uh, social distancing is also not something that is being adhered to lately here. Uh, so, but, uh, yes, so that is what I can say in regards to the ad adherence to the protocols. A face masking or nose masking is up, but the rest are quite low uh, in the various areas in the region. The Bono region usually doesn't see like uh, outdoor or indoor uh, big events happening during Christmas. Are we seeing something like that this time? Yes, the Bono East region, uh, let me, I'm in the Bono East region, uh, we have a lot of these events or search events uh, coming up. Um, I know quite a, a couple of them uh, on the 24th, 25th through the uh, uh, new year, that is January 1st. I know there will be a number of search events uh, likely going to be held uh, because we see flyers here and there. So there is something health authorities are concerned about. I have been able to engage the regional health director and uh, he, he, he is urging or cautioning the public to stay away from partying with strangers and then avoid crowded places and he says uh, if possible when you are happy, you're thinking of having an event it should be outdoor and not indoor so uh, more education is being conducted on various media platforms to raise awareness on the rising figures we are calling in the region as well.
Anna Sabit is from the Bono East region. Ashanti region is one of the regions that is recording higher cases. Uh, it used to follow uh, Greater Accra closely. Now it seems to be taking over. Oheme Teria has joined us from the Ashanti region. Oheme, how is Kumasi looking like? Yes, Aisha, uh, thank you. For the Ashanti region, health uh, authorities are concerned. Uh, with the fact that the region has entered its fourth wave uh, based on the uh, current uh, figures the region has been recording uh, as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Uh, health authorities are not uh, happy uh, because, for instance, if you look at the last uh, two weeks, uh, before then, the region was recording one or two uh, cases. But the last uh, two weeks, the figures uh, jumped from one to 49. And as at uh, this period, that is uh, week 50 of the uh, survey that the, uh, the region uh, has been recording, between 13th to 19th December, uh, the region recorded 179 new cases, 171 new confirmed uh, cases of COVID-19. Uh, so uh, this is giving some cause of worry uh, to health authorities in the region and they are encouraging people to uh, go back to the safety uh, protocols. Uh, that is the uh, hand washing, you know, and the running water with soap, the wearing of a uh, face mask, and all the other uh, protocols that were, you know, introduced. And uh, if you look at uh, the new trend, what uh, it means is that uh, cumulatively, uh, the region has uh, recorded 353 uh, cases per 100,000 uh, you know, of the population. So if you look at every 100,000 of the population, it means 355 of the people are uh, COVID-19 uh, positive. And then uh, as at the period, seven out of the 43 uh, districts in the region has also recorded new cases with the Wasi East District recording the highest a proportion of 52.05%. Uh, so that has been the COVID situation in the Ashanti region. Mm. Um, Ohiming, I know in Kumasi, there are usually also these kind of events that happen. Uh, are there some that we know of? Uh, yes, uh, there has been several, you know, entertainment uh, programs uh, lined up for uh, mm -hmm the Christmas uh, festivities and then uh, during the New Year uh, period. Uh, so most of these activities are either, most of majority of them, I must say, are indoor events. Uh, some being a music event, some are also, you know, a comedy events here and there. Uh, but in some cases, some of the organizers have made it, you know, COVID-19 vaccination compulsory that you come you show your COVID-19 vaccination card, then you are allowed to enter or participate in these events. Uh, but there's also concern that some of these uh, events that are indoors uh, should be pushed, you know, outside to uh, the outdoor, you know, open air, open space, so people can enjoy without contracting or coming into contact with COVID-19. Mm. Uh, so that is also there. But as to whether in the residents who you know, adhere to the COVID-19 protocols as being uh, advised. It's also another thing. Generally, because, generally, you know, what are you picking up? Are they are they willing or are they even complying as at now? Um, most of the activities, are, uh, the events are coming up, especially either on 25th or 25th, and then some are also on January 1. Uh, but uh, the, the last event that just happened, Unfortunately, yes, the event organizers insisted that you come with your COVID-19, you know, vaccination card. For instance, you remember the MPP uh, delegates uh, conference, for instance, too, it is not an entertainment event, but it was one of the biggest events uh, to happen in the Ashanti region ahead of uh, the end of uh, the end of this year. Uh, many people came, but uh, COVID-19, you know, vaccination card was an entry requirement for people to go in there. But that was the uh, the venue itself. But there were people who had not been vaccinated but converged outside, uh, you know, the, the premises. So these are concerns that health authorities have raised. 
that a single day event ground reserve will ensure strict compliance that you come with your COVID-19 vaccination card. But what about those who gather outside uh, the premises to converge, you know, talk among themselves and all that? So they are encouraging that majority of these events should be pushed, you know, outdoor. Ohim Interia is our man from uh, the Ashanti region. And this shows, Ohimin, that um, generally, uh, if you look at compliance to the protocols, it hasn't been encouraging, right? Not at all. Not that I know. When you are in town, when you are in the commercial buses, uh, you see people, if you count, let's say, 10 people, you only see uh, just one person, you know, in, in for instance, wearing the face mask. Uh, so the wearing of face masks is an issue. The washing of hands uh, with soap and the water, burning water is also an issue. And not majority of the safety protocols, you know, people are not adhering to them. You go to the offices and the public places, you, you don't find the, the water that used to be around. So nowadays, uh, people have an edge and they are not even observing the safety protocols at all, Aisha. Let's head to the Upper West region and speak with Rafiq Salam. Uh, Rafiq, the Upper West region has done well compared to the Ashanti region and the Greater Accra region. But that does not erase the fact that people are still contracting in the Upper West region. What is the situation right now in the Upper West region? Kindly unmute for me, uh, Rafiq. Okay, so Rafiq Salam is from the Upper West region. And if you look at the uh, score, uh, the dashboard, the COVID-19 dashboard, and you look at the region distribution, you realize that the Upper West region has done um, quite well, uh, especially with the um, spread of the uh, virus. So the chart shows a decline in active cases from October until the middle of November. And then in December, there's been an upward trend. And this is likely to usher us into a fourth wave. That's what the health experts are selling us. But if you look at the regional distribution, you will realize that Upper West region is doing quite better. As I mean, if you compare it to the Greater Accra region, Ashanti region, Eastern region, Upper West region is doing quite well there. But still, there are people who are contracting the virus over there. As to whether the people themselves are aware of what is happening and whether they are taking precaution to ensure they do not contract the diseases and do not also spread it is one thing we seek to know from Rafiq Salam, who has joined us again. Rafiq Salam, uh, if you can hear me, I want you to paint a picture of how WA is looking right now. Rafiq, you need to unmute. All right, so we may have to drop Rafiq and raise him again to tell us about what is happening in WA. Um, definitely the figures have risen. And if you look at the dashboard we showed you earlier, there are new cases. Uh, I mean, if you look at just within one window, the new cases are alarming. And this is getting health experts worried. You just heard from Dr. Dacosta Boaje, who says that, I mean, from the look of things, we would have to try and um, at least cancel some shows that have large numbers that will be held indoors. He just told us that at one of the events, they were able to agree on reducing the numbers to just one third of the uh, original number that they were going to accommodate. And he also said they ensured that there are big uh, uh, door space, there are spaces that were allowing a lot of ventilation for the people who will be patronizing these events so they will be safe. Rafiq Salam is back on the phone. Rafiq, uh, tell me how WA is looking like this afternoon. Uh, in terms of uh, the compliance with the COVID-19 uh, protocol in the airport, uh, it's not different as uh, uh, the rest of the country. Uh, for the airport region, I jokingly said uh, some few uh, days ago that it's only the airport region uh, or the regional director of the Ghana Health Services. They are the ones who are only uh, using the have said to lose mass uh, at the moment. You go anywhere in the Apple region, people are not really respecting this 
safety protocols. That markets are worse on the street. It's nothing to write them about. And so many of the people of the feeling that it's by his grace that people in the region are surviving. But it's not, it's not due to any tactical or any uh, things that are put in place by the authority. Rafik, I usually don't see some of these large concerts, uh, large uh, programs, uh, events happening in the Upper West region. Is it different this year? Um, we haven't uh, gotten any large uh, conference that took place in the Upper West region. Uh, the only thing that comes to mind, uh, that came to mind for now, uh, was about the Northern Development uh, Summit, which took place at Yoruba, uh, where a host of... Uh, stakeholders are converging to talk about the northern uh, regions. But that one, uh, it was done under all the protocols, hand washing, everything was put in place there. But, uh, but we haven't gotten any uh, uh, complaints about that. But in the Apple Virginia, we have gotten funerals and then also talking about outdoor events and then, uh, you know, and weddings. And that's where the uh, mass of the crowd uh, is in the Apple Virginia. And so, uh, but you go to these places, these protocols are not respected. I even the last time I don't even remember the last time I saw a Veronica bucket in the Apple region because they are not used in the regions now. Authorities not worried about the situation in the region. Health authorities are really deeply worried to the marrow about the situation. As I told you earlier, it's just by his grace that the people in the region are surviving. You go to our market, but all the street, they are simply not respecting this safety health protocols. And so it's really a health uh, concern uh, for the people. But the health authorities are somehow happy the vaccination is taking place uh, in the region because not many people are having uh, those kind of views uh, about weird views about uh, the vaccine going to do something on to uh, So people are really uh, complying with regards to uh, what was the to have said some few months ago. People are availing themselves for the vaccination, right? Yes. Right, Rafiq Salam is our man in the Upper West Region and he's been telling us the situation in the Upper West Region. As Christmas approaches, how are the people um, embracing uh, for uh, bracing themselves for the festive season?